In this lesson, we'll take a look at how to add simple interactivity to your application by using event listeners. The window presented has three different elements, a label at the top, an image view in the middle, and then a label at the bottom. Let's take a look at the code. The label at the top is created in lines 14 through 23. Notice that in order to position the label at the top of the window, the height and width properties are set to auto, and then the top and left properties are set accordingly. The image in the middle is set lines 24 to 26 by calling the create image view, and this is an image that is local, it's on the device. As well, lines 28 through 36 include the creation and positioning of the bottom label, and notice the height and width are set to auto, and the positioning is set accordingly. What we'll do is we'll create some code that'll allow us to swipe um, the finger over the image and have it change. Here the finger being uh, simulated by the mouse. To do this, we'll have to add an event listener to the image view, which is happy face. Before we do this, we'll take a note to see that the um, components have been added in stacking order so that happy face is at the bottom and the two labels are at the top. This allows the labels to appear over the image. Right above this directive here, when one add happy face, we'll start adding uh, the code necessary to create an event listener. So we'll type happy face dot add event listener. Open the parentheses. We'll be listening for the swipe event and we'll type function E, open a curly brace, close it, and close the parentheses. Now, in case you're wondering, E represents um, the object that's calling the event, or that's listing the event, rather. We could call it whatever we wanted. Uh, some people use EVT instead of E. Uh, e seems nice and simple to me. So, we are attaching an event listener to Happy Face, and we're listening for the swipe event. So now, we'll use a condition. If e.direction equals left, then do something. Else if e.direction equals right, then we'll do something else. And what we want to do here is we want to switch the image of the happy face so it faces the direction of the swipe. So I've created two different happy face images, one that faces right and one that faces left. In order to change them, I'll need to access the URL property of the happy face variable, which represents the image view. Now I could type the following, happy face URL equals and then a new value but we're going to use a little more sophisticated approach here. Since we actually have the happy face object in memory, it's represented by E. So what we'll do is we'll type e.source, can't forget that, dot URL equals and then the value. Okay, so we want images dot face left dot PNG. Okay. And as well, we want to change the text in the bottom caption. So this variable here, caption, represents uh, the label at the bottom of the screen. So I can't use e.source because e.source refers to um, the listener, which is happy face. So I'll just type caption, so that's referring to that bottom label, dot text equals, now let me go ahead and copy this text. Okay, so he's facing left and looking right because the direction of the swipe is left. Okay, now I'll copy these two lines and paste them at line 50. And I'll just transpose left and right. So instead of face left, face right. And instead of look, facing left and looking right, we'll do the opposite. Not right, race. There we go. Okay, so we'll review again the uh, happy face object, which is an image view, has an event listener added to it, and that event 
is listening for um, swipe. And then when it hears that event, it does this anonymous function beginning here. And E represents the happy face object. So then what we're doing is we're testing for the direction of the swipe. So E dot direction, if it's to the left, then we'll perform this block of code. If it's to the right, we'll perform this block of code. And in case you're not used to conditions, notice the double equals, which represents equality. The single equals represents assignment. We'll save this, head over to the window and close it, and then titanium, let's launch. Okay, so as I click and drag to the left, it changes, click and drag to the right, it changes. And you see that the, te the text in the label is also changing. If I, tw if I twice drag to the left, nothing happens. If I twice drag to the right, nothing happens. Well, technically, it is loading again. But Okay, so if you're wondering how I know um, what uh, the property of E is, well, that's where you go to the Accelerator site and look at the APIs. So here at the Accelerator site, I'm on the mobile API reference page and I'm looking up titanium.ui.imageView. So there are different methods, including add event listener and remove event listener. And at the bottom, there are events. So these are the events that we can listen for. And so what I've listened for is swipe, which is right here. And it's fired when the de device detects a swipe. And so the e dot and then the value is here, so e.direction, or source, or type, as well x or y. So you can get pretty expressive in that you could detect a swipe, um, and then as well where on the screen uh, the swipe occurred. Uh, if you look at some of the other events that you can listen for, there's single tap, or um, a click, so that's just tapping the device. Uh, so anyhow, the great thing is that these UI elements here on, in this really um, tall column, a lot of them can accept uh, different types of events. So you can actually, with just this, this little, little bit of knowledge, really explode out um, the interactivity really simply by taking a look at your application, identifying its elements that are on the screen, and what type of interactions you want. So if we wanted a double tap on this label, we would at attach an event listener to the label and then listen for a double tap and then have a block of code. So it makes it really simple uh, to get started with um, uh, even pretty complex interactivity using Titanium.